Welcome to the Southeastern Wisconsin Virtual Youth Services Performers Showcase. This showcase is sponsored by the SUI Library Systems, which include uh, Arrowhead Library System, Bridges Library System, Kenosha County Library System, Lakeshores Library System, Milwaukee County, County Federated Library System, and Monarch Library Systems. My name is Jason Penkoffer, and I am a library associate at the Waukesha Public Library. I will be your MC for this first morning session. So welcome everybody, we're glad you're here. All attendees will be muted, webcams will be turned off, and the chat is disabled for you so you can relax and view the demonstrations without interruptions. If you have any problems or questions, please submit those in the Q&A box. <clears throat> you can find the Q&A box in the lower portion of your screen if you're using a computer or on the upper portion of your mobile device, such as a phone or tablet. All sessions will be recorded and made available on YouTube for a limited time. You will find that YouTube link in your program booklet. It's right on page one. For your convenience in the chat box, we will post a link to a view only copy of the program booklet. Please note that the viewable copy is only available during these performer showcase sessions. And the recordings that we're making today will only be available from November 22nd of this year through June 1st of 2021. Again, that link is right on page one in your booklet. Our three performers for this hour are Magic, Morgan, and Liliana, Little Miss Anne, and Mad Science. Each performer will have up to 10 minutes to provide a sample performance, and then we'll do up to five minutes of question and answer. Again, you can submit your questions by typing them into that Q&A box, and we'll read them to the performer. So let's go ahead and start our showcase. Prepare to be dazzled by our first performers. As you can see on page 27 of your program booklet, Magic Morgan and Liliana combine the art of illusion and comedy to give the audience a program of wholesome entertainment, humor, magic, mime, and more. Take it away, Magic Morgan and Liliana. Just one second. Not sure what happened, just one second. He just texted me saying he's not in. One moment, sorry. All 
All right, so we're just having some technical difficulties. We'll be back with Magic Morgan and Liliana in just a moment here. I do some magic, but I don't know any. Uh, oh, man. I'm, I'm getting uh, from the imaginary director uh, at the other end of the room here. I'm getting the uh, stretch and fill time uh, uh, direction here. So I'm going to tell the one joke that I know. What's worse than finding a worm in your apple? It's finding half a worm in your apple. Usually at this point when I'm doing this joke for, for kids, I explain the joke, which makes it funnier as we all know. Uh, we're just waiting here. All right, I think I think it looks like we are going to have little Miss Anne uh, do her portion here. So let me just get to my part of my script here. Uh, so next we're going to do little Miss Anne while we wait for the uh, to fix our technical difficulties that we're having with Magic Morgan and Liliana. Uh, little Miss Anne is on page 25 of your booklet. She performs upbeat, fun, interactive music for families. Kids will be inspired to sing, clap, jump, dance, and count to Anne's reimagined classics and soulful, soulful originals that explore topics like animals, culture, individuality, hope, counting, and community. Take it away, Little Miss Anne. All right. Okay, do you see me, everybody? Just uh, type a yes from the... Um panelist channel. Hello, my name is Luna Masayan from Chicago. Just going to go ahead and tell, unless I hear otherwise. Thank you so much for coming today. And um, okay, yes, I'm spotlighted now. I just saw that I'm spotlighted. Hello, everybody. I'm Luna Masayan. We're going to get, we're going to get this moving. Anyway, I'm Luna Masayan from Chicago. I made five kids albums and I'm working on my sixth. I've played all over Chicago and around the the country, and I'm really excited to play some songs for you. So thank you for having me. Um, I want to ask you out there, and you can type it in in the chat. Um, what do you think this is? This is a. What do you think that is? Just go ahead and type it. Um, it's a, okay. It's a sweet potato. Yes, and I'm going to sing a song. It's called Ube, everybody. Ube, <clears throat> and it's about a purple yam. And the purple yam is used to make desserts in Filipino culture. So um, let me go ahead and help. Oh, got a chat. Oh, OK, great. So here we go. OK, they don't have chat. OK, thanks for letting me know. OK, <laughs> anyway, here we go. We're going to put this on my foot, and we're gonna, I'm going to teach you the song, everybody. So this song is called Ube. Can you say Ube out there? Ube. And it's about a purple yam. And there's dance moves, everybody. So when I say Ube, 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 can we do this? Ube, 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 ube. Yeah, you got it. We call this a fist pump. And when I sing la la, put your hands on the wall. La la, la la. Okay, now when I say, do you like green eggs and ham? This is the silly part. We say, no. And then when I say, or do you like a purple yam, a purple yam? We say, yeah. Last part of this is when I say, um, shine, we're going to put our hands up in the air, twinkle our fingers, and when I say shine, we're going to bring it down as slowly as, what's the slowest animal on planet? A sloth? A turtle? Yep. A tortoise? Okay. Shine. We bring it down slowly. Ube, ube, ube. Okay. Here we go. This is called Ube. Here's the big 
much everybody <clears throat> that song was about my uh, Filipino heritage and um, as a former teacher it's important for me to include everybody here's a song off of one of my albums if you wouldn't mind all clapping your hands we're gonna clap our hands for love amor Hope, Esperanza, friends and family, amigos, y la familia, and good health. been to Wisconsin a lot. I love coming to Wisconsin. A couple years ago, I did a bunch of libraries up by you. I'm going to do one more song. And like Wisconsin, we got we got a lot of love. And we also have something called the 606. Have you ever heard of the 606? I did do, draw a picture right here. A 606, and it will help you visualize a little bit. <clears throat> the 606 is a trail. It's similar to the High Line in New York and it goes three miles long and people run and they they walk and they skateboard and they ride their bike and it's elevated. It used to be a, a, an old railroad um, track. Anyway, they fixed it up and it's people love it and it's called the 606. Can you do that? 606 because the song is called the 606 because 
That's the first three digits of the area code. So anyway, I'm going to show you the song 606 rolling. Now, ask your grown-up which way is east. We're going to point east. We're going to point west, west, east. And then um, usually at this point, of, if we had a chat, I would ask people to type, type in what neighborhood or what town do you live in during the song. But since there's no chat, we're going to just pretend you all are doing it. Sometimes I get tons of people doing that. Okay, I'm going to do a short version of this song. You remember how to do the 606 with your fingers, right? There's a place I know where the happy people go, and it's called the 606. You can laugh and play, you can ride your bike all day, and it's called the 606. It goes west and east and it's called the city. So much for listening everybody all right that was wonderful thank you so much little miss ann oh you're welcome jason thanks for having me absolutely all right uh, so as far for attendees remember if you have any questions right now for little miss ann we do have a few minutes for questions for her uh, i do i have a question actually okay sure um, yes jason are you open to having libraries collaborate, work with each other, with other libraries to book a virtual or in-person in performance? Uh, definitely. I would love that. That's wonderful. All right. So remember, as you're, as you're thinking about booking Little Miss Anne here, that you can cooperate with, uh, with another library to, to bring Little Miss Anne to your library, either virtually or in person. Um, that's wonderful to know. Uh, I've got a question from Karen here, if you're ready, Hi, Little Karen. Miss Anne. Yes, I'm ready. Are prices the same for virtual as in person? That's a great question. And um, I, as a former Chicago public school teacher, I really try to work with people's budgets. And um, of course, we're all feeling our way through this, what we're, what's going on. And I definitely, it's not the same. It's less expensive because I don't have to lift anything heavy. <laughs> I don't have to pack up my car. I don't have to drive from Chicago. So um, I'm, I really try to work with people's budgets as a person who uh, promotes reading and music and for, for people um, to have accessibility. So thank you for that question, Karen. Right, and Karen says thank you. You're welcome. Very welcome. All right. I'll give it another moment here. If you again, if you've got a question for Little Miss Ann while we've got her here, uh, just type it in your Q and A box. Remember, again, if you're on your computer, the the button to open that Q and A box should be at the bottom. If you are on your phone or tablet, it should be towards the top of your Zoom app. All right. We've got a question from Ann. If you were on Facebook Live. Is the library allowed to keep it up for a while? It It, it is for a while, but um, we would just, you know, have to have that arranged beforehand. I'm definitely open to that um, as long as it's arranged and it's just not up there like like 10 years later, I find it up there. So. <laughs> right. Because, yeah. you know, I try to improve as time goes on. And Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So have that, as long it, as we discuss it. Right. So if, if you're thinking, uh, uh, if you have an idea of how long you'd like to have the video available when you're when you're contacting little Miss Ann, maybe maybe put that in there. And that's something that you can 
figure yeah. out together. All right. Uh, we've got a question from another Anne. How long is your virtual show, Little Miss Anne? Thanks for asking that. Um, my virtual shows are usually 30 minutes long. And um, I am open to shorter or longer, but I feel like longer is with the attention span of kids that are like eight and under could be difficult. So I say I say 30 minutes is a, is a sweet amount of time. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Give it another moment here and see if we get another question. And of course, my virtual shows, uh, my live shows are much more interactive. And that's my main thing is I have everyone in the audience moving, jumping, moving around. And I didn't make a fancy video, but feel free to find that those videos on YouTube or go to my website. And Anne says, thank you for the, the answer. Oh, you're, you're welcome, welcome, Anne. Anne. And also, and I can vouch for Little Miss Anne's very energetic and wonderful live shows. Thank you, uh, Jason. We've had. You're very welcome. It's, it's fantastic. All right. Okay, and then I, I've got one last question that we have time for here. Uh, we'd like to know, how did you become a performer, Little Miss Ann? This is a great question. Um, I was a former Chicago public school teacher. I worked with kids on the spectrum. And um, I started bringing my guitar into class. I was always in bands. Uh, but when my daughter was three, and um, she's now in college, <laughs> she... Uh, I started following, um, combining music and my education, and it just kind of overtook uh, my life because I started making albums and uh, play, playing all over the country. But I love it. I love that I found something that uh, I feel brings joy in the world and puts out positive messages, inspires kids and families. And it, I feel very blessed to be able to do uh, something that I feel so passionate about. All right. Well, that's that's wonderful. And and thank you again so much for for being with us today and doing a, a demo. And thank uh, you, Jason. You've yes, done a great job so far. You're welcome. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now it looks like we've got Magic Morgan and Liliana back. Um, <laughs> by little Miss Ed. Um, All right. So once again, uh, if you need if you're looking at your program booklet, uh, Little Miss Ant was on page 25. We're going to go to page 27 for Magic Morgan and Liliana. We've got them back once again. Wholesome entertainment, humor, magic, mime, and more. Take it away, Magic Morgan and Liliana. Hello, 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 hi. All right, we'll start off with this here, the yellow handkerchief right in my hand, and then we have a duck. That's pretty good. I like that one. Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing? My name is Matt Morgan. I am a deaf magician, and I'd like to introduce my lovely wife, Liliana. Everybody say hi, Liliana. Wonderful. So what we're going to do is I hope everybody can see me signing and uh, you are hearing the voice of our interpreter, John. Everybody can say hi to John. That's our interpreter for our show. And I have been working with John, I think, for almost 10 years now. And this is interesting working with him so far apart, um, but it can still happen. And what I want to do is I want to talk about some books right now is one of the things we have is Dr. Seuss, the beginning book collection there. You can see that there has five different books in there. There's the cat in the hat, hop on pop. There is fox in socks. There's green eggs and ham. There's also one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. So what I did is I have taken these books and I've mixed them up and I've put them behind one of the numbers. So what we're gonna do is actually, I'm gonna call for Jason to come back in real quick. He's gonna volunteer with us if you can. Hi, Jason. Hey, how Hello. are you doing? Doing well. Right. Hello, everyone. All right, wonderful, Jason. Are you ready? Jason, I just need you to pick a number one through five. That's all you have to do. Three. 
three. Three. Okay, so you're going to pick number three. Let's go back into there. Let's see number three. And let's see. Not that one, not one, that one, not that one. Let's put this one over here. We're going to put that one there, that one there. Okay, perfect. So you picked number three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what we have right here. Now, you see this plastic grid that we put in front of it? It's kind of like a sign, but we're going to use this. It's a game board because we're going to play tic-tac-toe together real quick, okay? So what we're going to do is it's going to be teams. Well, kind of teams. So Liliana and Jason are on a team. Matt's all by himself. So Matt said, I'm starting with X's. So I'm going to go to the middle right there. Looking good now. Liliana and Jason, what are you thinking? What do you think? Where do you want to go? Jason. Top, top left. You want top left? Yes, please. Is that good? Okay. Okay. We'll go top right. Okay. All right. Oh. My turn here. So what do we have here? Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for middle. Middle left right there. Okay. All right. Jason, what are we thinking now? What do we think? Where do you want to go? Let's go in the below our first move. <laughs> Directly below the first O. Top left? <laughs> Sorry, you said top left before, right? Or is it bottom left? I don't remember. <laughs> and Liliana's saying, no, 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 no. Yes. No, 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 no. Liliana's right. I agree with her. Yes. Yeah, Liliana. Okay, yes. That, yes. I, that was a good move. I, I thought that would be good, too. <laughs> all right, now let's think. All right, we're on a roll here. Now Matt's saying, all right, for my next one, I am not going to let you win this one. That is not going to happen. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. So I am going to go right there. Okay, what are we going to do, Jason? What are you thinking? What do you think? Where, where should we go? That top left looks good again. <laughs> top left. All right. Okay, right there. That's where you yes. wanted to go? Yep. Yes. Jason yes. said that too. Okay, sorry. Okay, oh, rats. Okay. You blocked. You blocked it. <laughs> blocked my my win there matt said all right i'm gonna go now i am gonna go bottom middle bottom left no 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 i'm going top middle i'm gonna block you right there okay yes blocked you look at that all right liliano and jason what are you thinking where are you thinking bottom center bottom center liliana yes yeah? yes okay she likes that idea a lot okay yes excellent bottom, bottom center Okay, well right. done. Good job. All right, we have our last one we are going to play. The spot that's left there is the bottom left. And ooh, we have a tie. Nobody won. Nobody lost. We have a tie. But that was still a pretty good game. High five to everybody <laughs> playing at home. Well done. But something that we forgot is how does this relate to our Dr. Seuss books? Now, you said number three in the beginning, correct? Yes. You picked yes. number three. So that's the bag that you chose, but let's take a look and see what is in there. You have selected one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. So that was the one you picked before the before we started playing our game. Now I want to show you something pretty cool here. What else do we had? Like I said, we had hop on pop, cat in the hat, we had green eggs and ham, we had fox and socks. These are all wonderful, wonderful books but I would like to show you something kind of fun and special. So we knew that you were gonna pick that book. So we made sure that when we played the game, that it would come out just like that. So well done. Way to go, high five, oh, great job. That thank was perfect, you. Jason. I appreciate your participation right there. And actually, I would like to tell a story about my grandfather many many years ago he was a wonderful wonderful magician and i watched him perform for several several years i think when i was finally six years old he decided he was going to teach me magic and i learned everything i could for another six years when i was 12 my grandfather unfortunately passed away and at that point i said you know what i think i'm done with magic but i didn't like that decision that was a bad decision i think i wanted to learn more but i didn't know I could do so i asked my mother mother would you please teach me some more magic she could not because she did not know how to do magic but she had a really good idea 
she brought me into a very large building. We opened up the doors, and when we got inside, we saw thousands and thousands of books. We ended up in the library, and I found the section on magic, and I read every single page of every single magic book that my library had. So thank you so much to people of the library for helping me be a successful magician today, getting me into my profession. And what we are going to do is the first illusion that my grandfather worked on me with. So this is one of the first things he taught me back when he was alive. So we have our tissue paper here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear this up just like that. Let's give that another tear right there. And that part can go there. Now, if you look, I have made a very crude bird. So that is kind of like a dove. That's okay. I mean, that's pretty good for just ripping paper. But if we put this in here, it becomes a real bird. <laughs> so that was the first thing that my grandfather showed me. So wonderful, wonderful. Thank you guys so much for letting us come here to hang out with you and entertain you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Liliana. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, John. And then uh, we can go ahead with the question and answers if uh, anybody has anything. And then let me just turn the music off. Okay. All right. So that was just a brief show. So then we can go ahead with the question and answer. Great. All right. Well, thank you again, Magic Morgan and Liliana and John. Just got to start my... There we go. Thank I'm you. back. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. And th hey, thanks for uh, letting us uh, pick you as a volunteer. I don't think you understood that when you first started this, but I'm, <laughs> I'm happy it all worked out. That's okay. I think I got to volunteer the last time we did the Performer Showcase. It was wonderful. All right. Wonderful. So uh, first, I want to start with the same question that we start started with for Little Miss Anne, which is, are you open to libraries collaborating uh, to bring you to their to bring you to their libraries, either virtually in or in person? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, we are fine with that. And then uh, to, uh, the other question as well, too, we can do a Zoom show. We can do uh, the live shows. Um, I know at first doing the Zoom shows was a little bit of a change, but we really have worked on it since March. And it's been nice. We've actually done uh, several different shows in different places throughout America and actually other countries. So while we're not going to these places anymore, we're still able to perform in them, which is, it's interesting. We just kind of have to work stuff out with the library, um, but it really is, uh, it's something we tried to kind of develop to still be able to get the kids involved. Um, so it's not just them just sitting there watching. So we still try and get as much participation as possible, even through the Zoom shows as well too. So yes, collaboration, please feel free. Wonderful, thank you. All right. Next, we have a question from Catherine. Uh, the same question as we had for Little Miss Anne about virtual fees. Uh, are your virtual fees the same as your in-person fees? Is there some wiggle room? Are there di is there a different schedule for those? Um, I guess it, it just depends, but um, yes, uh, the pricing is different. And like Little Miss Anne said, we are open to working with everybody to try and develop a show that fits for their budget. Um, I know that we're all trying to work on kind of the same goal. We want to make sure that our kids are educated, but also entertained. So we are absolutely open. Shoot us an email, give us a call. We're more than happy to talk about what we can do to make sure that uh, uh, our experience and uh, your budget can match. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, let's actually see. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'd like to ask, actually, this is another one that we answered for Little Miss Anne. I think it's a useful one, though. If you do a virtual performance and say it's on like Facebook Live, are you open to that that video staying up on the library's web page for a certain amount of time? Is that something that libraries can can kind of negotiate with you? Yes. 
yes, um, I would just say, let us know in advance. And that is absolutely something we can do. And just let us know and let us know how long you want to do it. And that's fine. That's great. That's great. Um, oh, go ahead. What are you doing? Oh, no, I was sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, we're just excited. Whatever you guys I, have. Me too. I'm excited as well. Uh, I, I, I apologize, I, I missed if you already said this, how long is your virtual performance compared to your, to your real performances, your, your in-person? Because <laughs> not that virtual performances aren't real, they are real Um, I guess it depends on you, it depends on your audience, it depends on um, who you have. I know uh, it, kids' attention spans are sometimes <clears throat> a little short, so we can tailor a performance typically we do about a half an hour and then we'll do a little talk back of we've included a lot more uh, teaching the kids sign um, so there's a little bit more interaction at there um, usually the live performances are a typical 40 to 50 minutes or so but again we can tailor anything to kind of meet whatever works if uh, it's an online performance and you want something longer we can really work that show to kind of meet uh, whatever you need. Honestly, if you need us for up to 90 minutes, we can figure that out too, but that usually yeah. isn't something the libraries are requesting. So sure. Yeah. Usually 30 minutes base, and then we do some interaction afterwards. All right. Well, that that's wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, so I, I think that's going to be a running theme today is uh, performers are going to, if you have a question or if you have a need from a performer, there's going to be a lot of room to to contact them. All right. Well, it looks like it's about time to move on to our next performer. Thank you again so much, Magic Morgan and Liliana and John. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're, you're you welcome. guys have a great day and we hope to meet all of you in the future at some point. Have a great day. <laughs> thank you. You too. All, all right, right. Thanks for setting this up. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hey. All right. Okay. Next, we're going to move on to our third and final final performer for this session, for this first morning session of our performer showcase, and that is Mad Science. Mad Science is on page 26 of your booklet. Uh, so if you like, you can turn to that page to see a little more information. Watch as our mad scientists are able to defy gravity be enthralled by the didgeridoo cube tube excuse me cube it's a tube not a cube sorry i'm making i'm making stuff up to make it hard on you gaze in amazement at an explosion of foam i hope you're ready for some mad science take it away dr coco and dr dylan uh, why, thank you very much, Jason. Welcome, everybody, to the Mad Science Laboratories. As you heard, my name is Dr. Coco, and we here are on a mission to spark excitement in child's minds about science and be able to give them a clear idea of how science applies to their everyday world all around them. You know, one of the things that I really enjoy about science is that you can find a little bit of science in almost every single bit of the world that you can find all around you. And I know that our theme uh, moving into uh, this next program is Tales on Tales. And I think I found a little bit of science that we can explore with a few of the experiments that I have here. The first thing that I wanna talk about is balance. If you've ever looked at an animal that has a tail, one of the primary things that they use it for is to make sure that they can maneuver and balance as they run or walk or climb around. Now, balance itself is just two different types of forces that are balancing over each other. And there's a really cool experiment that we can do that demonstrates how balancing forces can actually hold things right in place. Now, in order to do this, I am going to be defying a little bit of gravity with a very cool experiment that has to do with this cup right here and is some water. Now, generally, if I take this cup that I filled with water and I tip it upside down, all the water is just gonna fall right out, right? But if we can understand that this little glass of water here, this little cup that's about halfway full, has its own mass and weight, it actually has something else that we call inertia, which is essentially, it's wanting to either stay completely still if it's already still or to continue to move if it's moving. 
Now I've put my cup of water here on this little platform here, and I can actually defy gravity by lifting up the cup on the platform. Now, even though the cup is suspended in midair on top of this little platform, gravity is still pushing it down or pulling it down, giving it the same inertia, but it's being balanced by the platform underneath it. Now, I can give a little bit more energy to this to try to move the cup back and forth by just kind of swinging it this way. And the more energy I give to it, the more motion that I send into this cup, the more inertia I'm actually giving it. And I'm also using something called a centrifugal force, which essentially means that every little bit of inertia that this cup has is trying to go away from the central point where I'm holding the string. Now I can add more and more inertia into this and not flip the cup over by simply spinning it around over and over again. And even though this cup is upside down for a little bit, as you can see, all the water is still right inside the cup. Now, this is because we balance the inertia of the cup moving down and this centrifugal force pushing it out by having this little platform here holding it in place. It's a really, really fun experiment, and it's actually one of the first science experiments that I learned when I was a very, very little mad scientist. Now, if you want to try this experiment at home, I do recommend that you ask one of your adult lab assistants to help you out to try to recreate this. You can do this with a bucket filled with water and just swinging it around with your arm. If you do, make sure that you do that experiment outside. Now, speaking of balance, there is something else that I want to share with you, and this also kind of has to do with tails. I was thinking about it over the, uh, over the weekend. And one of the coolest stories that I know about tails has to do with my favorite animal subject, which is dinosaurs. Did you know that a lot of the much larger dinosaurs, we've hypothesized that they had two brains or big clusters of nerves in their body. One that was in their head where you would expect it to be and another one at the base of their tail. The reason that they had this was because the, the animals themselves were so long that we think it took a very long time for the signals from the brain in the head to get all the way to the tail. So they uh, were able to develop two brains to make sure that you were able to control both sides of the animal at once. Well, the animal would be able to control both sides of the animal at once. Now, I don't have an actual brontosaurus or a patasaurus tail that I can demonstrate that with, but we can see how information can travel through a long string uh, over a period of time. And it has to do with this very cool tube that I have right here. Now, the name of this thing is called a flaming ditch redo. And for the most part, this is a noise maker. In a moment, I'm gonna put a bunch of fuel inside of this tube, and then I'm gonna ignite it with a little bit of heat to create a combustion inside. Now, that combustion is gonna start at the top and we should be able to see all that information slowly travel down to the bottom, at which point there will be a huge release of expanding gas and energy that can only be sent through the top here. And we should be able to hear a kind of nice little boom from the reaction. Now, in order for me to do this, I do have a couple of safety things that I wanna emphasize, which are always important whenever you're working in the laboratory. First and foremost, you always have to be safe when you do experiments. As you can see, I have my lab coat on. I have some safety goggles that I always make sure I'm wearing before I do any dangerous experiments. And I also wanna emphasize that as this is a fire experiment, I'm gonna ask that no one try this experiment at home. I am a trained mad scientist and I know how to safely do this experiment so that nothing goes wrong. I also have a fire extinguisher on my table just in case something does. Now, in order to ignite this, I'm going to be using a very special kind of fuel called ethanol, which is very, very flammable. Here, if you take a look at my close-up camera, you can notice that I have a Mr. Yuck sticker right on the top of the bottle. Now, scientists, this is very important. This is a good reminder to me that this chemical has to be handled safely whenever I pick it up, because the chemical inside this container could be dangerous if I'm not careful with it. Now, in order to make this reaction happen, I'm not just gonna be adding fuel to this tube. I'm actually mixing the fuel that I'm putting in this tube with a bunch of the air that's already inside of here. You see, whenever you have combustion, you need three different ingredients mixing together. You need fuel, which in this case is the ethanol. You need oxygen, which is in the air all around us and inside this tube. And then finally, you need a little bit of heat to start the combustion off. 
Now I'm gonna turn this tube back and forth a little bit so that all that ethanol that I put in there can mix with the oxygen in the air inside the tube. And then I'm gonna drain off all the excess just to be on the safe side. And then I am going to ask Dr. Dillon to drop the lights in the laboratory so you can really see how this flame is gonna travel all the way across the length of this tube. All right, so Dr. Dillon, if you can drop the lights, Everyone, watch closely and let's see if we can see this travel happen. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> Did you see it run back and forth, scientists? Now, that little pop at the end was because of all the heat that was inside this tube. It was expanding very, very quickly, but it only had one direction that it could go. And because it all rushed out at once, it created some nice sound vibrations that we were able to enjoy. All right, now, the last experiment that I wanna talk about also has an animal that helps us out. Well, it's not really an animal, it's a micro uh, organism, but it's also an animal that doesn't have a tail to it. But even if an animal doesn't have a tail, they can still do amazing things. For this experiment, I'm gonna be adding a little bit of yeast and a little bit of warm water to a beaker, just to kind of wake the yeast up just a little bit. I'm gonna mix this up for about 30 seconds until we get a real nice kind of a slurry. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a bunch of extra chemicals to this slurry mix to make sure that this yeast can start reacting, combusting, and add a whole bunch of oxygen to it. Now, in this glass here, I have some hydrogen peroxide that I'm gonna add a bunch of soap to and a little bit of food coloring. Now, scientists, I want you to take a close look at this container and tell me if you see a chemical reaction happening inside the beaker as of yet. It doesn't really look like we have anything really changing except for maybe changing the color because I added that food coloring to it. Now I'm gonna add this to my beaker right here. And in a moment, I am gonna add all of that yeast slurry. When it touches the hydrogen peroxide, it's gonna start metabolizing all the food that it can and release a whole bunch of oxygen bubbles. But because we have that soap in there, we should be able to create some really cool foam. Let's see if it works. There we go, yes, yeah! <laughs> Look at that, scientists. All that yeast is metabolizing all the oxygen in the hydrogen peroxide and releasing it into a bunch of bubbles. Now, it may be tough to see in the camera, but there's also a little bit of steam coming off of this as well, because we just created a uh, exothermic reaction, which means that some of the energy that's being released is being made into heat energy as well. Now, these are just three really fun experiments that I was really happy that I was able to share with you scientists. If anyone has any questions about any of the experiments or anything else mad science does, I'd love to answer them for you. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Coco and Dr. Dillon. Uh, we'll, we'll start off with the standard question that I've been asking so far. Are, is, is Mad Science open to libraries collaborating together to bring you to their libraries, either virtually or in person? Absolutely. Absolutely. We're incredibly flexible. Um, our, our point is really just to try to get science out to as many kids as possible. So any way that we can work with you to make that happen, we're happy to do so. That's wonderful, thank you. Oh, and a reminder to attendees, uh, feel free, if you do have questions, go ahead and type those into your Q&A box. Uh, I am gonna go through, again, some of the, the previous questions because I think they're useful. Uh, if a library brings you virtually to them and they're putting it up on their Facebook Live, are they allowed to keep it up on their Facebook Live for a certain amount of time after the performance is concluded? Uh, well, that would depend on the program that we're doing. We do a lot of Facebook Live specific experiments, which are experiments that would be safe for uh, you know scientists to do at home as well. Uh, but the the shows itself, we do try to keep those limited or restricted for a little bit. But if you jump on our Facebook page, you can see some of the different experiments and Facebook Lives that we have created, and uh, we'd be happy to generate a specific Facebook Live show for your library to be able to present as well. Great, so th that's for, for attendees, that's something to keep in mind. Um, these, these shows are a little more intended to be live shows necessarily than archived for any amount of time afterwards. Um, uh, the next the next one that we've got, oh wait, hold on, I saw a live question. Oh, here's a, a, a question from Bethany. Does the skeleton have a name that's there with you, Dr. Coco? 
Oh yeah, this is my this is my buddy Sigmund. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Hello, Sigmund, and and thank you, Dr. Coco, and thank you, Bethany, for the question. Uh, let's see uh, another good one from a previous uh, Q and A session. How long is your virtual show? Do you have a set time, or is that somewhat flexible as people contact you for booking? It is very flexible. Uh, generally, our virtual shows run anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour. But again, it, uh, it really depends on what you're looking for. We can craft a show specifically to fit the time slot that you would like. All right. And Bethany says, thank you. Um, and thank you for that answer as well. Uh, and then the, the other question that I, I thought was very useful is virtual show fees. Is there, are those the same as your live show fees or is there flexibility there? There is flexibility there, but again, that also is going to depend on the length of the show, if it's going to be a hands-on workshop, or if it's going to be just a, a demonstration like what you saw here, or if we're going to be working with the kids, uh, you know, actually doing experiments with them live. So uh, it's a lot of uh, different uh, variables that we can mm -hmm. talk about, but if you want to reach out to our office, either you can email us at info at madsciencemilwaukee.com, or you can give us a call. Um, we'd be happy to talk about it with you. All right, great. And then I've got a couple more questions from our attendees. First is a question from Karen. Yes. Uh, she'd like to know, are there different scientists that come with Mad Science or is it always the same presenter? And then a nice compliment, you are wonderful. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, yes, no, we have a, a, a large group of Mad Scientists. So uh, it sometimes it will be me, sometimes it'll be somebody else. Yes, and I, I can, again, this is another one. We've had mad science at our library a few times. We've seen a few of you, different of your mad scientists, and they have all been fantastic. Um, Great. All right, the next question is from Kim. Uh, Kim would like to know, what is the youngest age group you would recommend for your shows? Uh, would one of your shows be appropriate for preschoolers? Oh, yes, definitely. We have a uh, show specifically crafted for preschoolers. Uh, generally, anything younger than that is a little bit too young for our presentations, but we do have uh, preschool-specific programs all the way up going from there. Fantastic. And then we've got time for this one last question from Anne. Uh, if, they, if a library is booking an in-person show, a live in-person show, how far does Mad Science travel? Ah, that is a very good question. Now, we do have a pretty far reach. We can uh, travel anywhere uh, within the state. So it, uh, wherever you are, we'll be happy to go there. Fantastic. All right. That looks like all of our questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Coco and Dr. Thank Dylan. You. Uh, and thank you attendees. Oh, and thanks again to Little Miss Anne and Magic Morgan and Liliana for presenting this morning. Uh, and to the attendees, thank you so much for joining us for this first session. We're gonna be taking a little break now uh, as we get ready for our next session. So if you are sticking around for that one, go ahead and take a little break to get up, stretch your legs, grab some coffee, answer some emails, do whatever you need to do. Uh, then you're welcome to come back and join us for our next session, which will be beginning at 11 a.m. If you are planning to attend that 11 a.m. session, you can stay on right now in the call if you like, or if you prefer, you can rejoin using that same Zoom link that you got in your email. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.